Hello, everyone. So, my name is Daniel, and I work in the RabbitMQ team. Uh, we do, well, RabbitMQ in Pivotal. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about how we implemented this protocol inside RabbitMQ to have better consistency. So, Let's start with the what's this talk uh, is originating from Spring Run platform given by these two guys, uh, Carl Nielsen and Michael Klishin. Uh When we all, all only started to work on Raft, and there was more like what we're going to do, and today it's what we actually did. So it's a slightly different thing. <laughs> um, so Pivotal is a company which uh, invests in RabbitMQ. Uh, they pay a salary, and they also provide services and support for RabbitMQ. Uh, you can check it out if you need some support for RabbitMQ, if you have something. Uh, so, what are we going to talk about? Like, what is the problem, first of all? Uh, how do we solve it right now in the current versions of RabbitMQ, and how we solve it with Raft and Maybe, maybe some, some other application of, of Raft that we will do in future. So RabbitMQ, if, if you like, maybe I, I believe a lot of people are aware what RabbitMQ is, but in short, it's a message broker. It, you, get, uh, you publish messages to it, and then you can consume messages from a different place. Uh, so the idea is to get messages around. Uh, it's not a database. That's what we like to say. And the problem definition is then when we have a publisher and a consumer and everything works well and we have some messages queued, uh, which is fine. We have multiple servers for um, failover. So if um, one server fails, consumer can reconnect to another one, still get messages from the publisher, everything's fine. But the problem in just the simple approach is that uh, the messages which were queued and on this failed server, they get lost. And in many situations, clients expect, well, users of, uh, of a dis distributed message broker expect that messages are not lost as soon as they get to the message broker. Um, yep, that's, that's probably what can be done, and it's done with message replication. So if we do have a message replication right now in RabbitMQ, so we're just improving it. Uh, if you want to tolerate arbitrary node failures and you want to preserve the order and you want to keep all the messages which are published to uh, the message broker safe, then that's the use case basically for, for message replication. Otherwise, you better not do that. There are better ways to route messages if you like, don't have these specific cases. And of course, for load latency scenarios, it doesn't make sense. For messages which have expiration, it doesn't make sense. And there are certain resource constraints in memory, in disk, and, and et cetera. Uh, so how does it work right now? And what are we trying to improve? So currently, we have a concept of um, mirrored queues. And the mirrored queues is when you have a master queue, which um, processes all the messages. Uh, it processes publishers. It processes uh, deliveries. And you have mirrored queues which exist on different uh, machines which are clustered. And these mirrored queues just save data. Uh, pretty simple. Should work, right? Um, and it works with a chain replication algorithm. And the chain replication, uh, I'm going to show it. Uh, it's just an intro. You can look at, at the paper. But chain replication works like this. So you have. Uh, head and you have a tail and something in between. And so you write to the head and read from the tail. To do that with master and mirror approach, we have to actually do turn the chain into um, a ring of some sort. And so we, have, we can publish to master and we have deliver from master, but we need a ring of mirrors. Uh, and so message travels through the ring of mirrors, which is fine. It works. But it's not that many connections. Uh, it distributes messages. It falls over. Uh, the problem arises when we lose a mirror. 
when we lose the master or, or a mirror, actually. And at this situation, we don't have a ring anymore. And to reform a ring, we need to change the links. Uh, and that's an action we should take uh, inside RabbitMQ. And then when this mirror actually wants to rejoin, it's not that easy because Ring continues to work and we keep pumping uh, data through it, right? We, we have messages. So they, they are coming and they are going all the time. Uh, and it has to resynchronize. So Master has to resynchronize with the mirror. And it takes time and people are not, not entirely happy about it. Uh, because it, it takes time, it cannot pro process any more publishers, and it could happen if it's just a network split and it was not actually burned down server, but yeah, we have to do that. So we're not entirely happy about the ring topology, and we even mentioned that in the federation, in a different plugin for IBITMQ docs, that ring topology is rather fragile, and we know that. It's, yeah, we are aware. Um, so we have several, several questions to our message replication system, like why do you need to resync? Uh, why are you so sensitive to network partitions? Why are you detecting errors, maybe false positives or vice versa? Uh, and one of the other things is that there is a way to lose messages in such systems. So if you emulate certain uh, uh, network splits. Eventually, it can lose messages, which was proven in the Jepson test by Carl Kingsbury. And in general, we can do better uh, replication. We, we, there, there is a technology. There was not a technology, by the way, when we were doing this thing. So Raft was not there yet. There were different uh, consensus algorithms, not, not exactly fit for the queues. But right now, we have it. And we have Raft. And we expect certain things of it. Uh, we expect uh, safe failover. We expect um, availability during recovery. We expect a lot of stuff which we currently don't have and we want to improve. So what is Raft? Right? Um, so it's a series of algorithms proposed in 2013. Uh, and it's similar to Q uh, to Q mirroring in, in the way that it replicates a log of operations. And there are already implementations which work. And they work quite well. They're used in, in serious production deployments. Uh, it's also TLA plus uh, proven, which is speaking of formal verifications and all that stuff. There. So it, it has a specification. And you can prove Raft is not, not losing messages. Um, yeah, this is just a, just a thing, right? When we have a queue and we have a log and you think, okay, this is the same thing, pretty much. And many services actually use log replication uh, to emulate queuing. We're not talking about the services right now, but if they do that, we can do that as well. Um, so what, what, what Raft, what, how, how does it work? So we have a leader and several followers, similar to master mirror concept. And leader sent messages uh, to followers to add to followers logs. Leader keeps its own log and send messages to followers. Um, and when leader fails, another follower reelects, uh, followers reelects a, a new leader. Uh, a bit more in details. Um, so it consists of these nodes, like followers, leaders. There's a concept of log, which is stored on disk, uh, obviously, because it, you want to save all the messages, so you probably want to save them as, as reliable as possible. So disk is the most reliable uh, available tool for us. Um, and we also have, uh, it's not exactly imp re represented in this picture, but we also have a state machine, which actually handles all the operation, all the logic we want to uh, encode in, in our tools. So let's say we in, so have an NQ command coming into the Raft uh, system. Leader adds it to its own log uh, and sends to the followers saying, please add this uh, message to, to your log. <coughs> when followers reply, 
uh, if majority of uh, nodes reply successfully, uh, the, the leader um, sets a commit index, meaning that this message in the log is persistent. It's not going to be removed. It's that. It's definitely that. It, and all nodes, uh, well, majority of nodes agree to that. Uh, after that, it applies uh, the um, message to the state machine. And in our case, that will be in queue of A. And it will be applied and it will be added to some internal data structures in the state machine. Uh, as you can see, follower two did not respond yet, but uh, leader and follower one will be enough because it's majority out of three. So it's pretty much how Raft works. There are a lot of other things like leader election and uh, all conflict resolution, but it's internal things and it's not that, that important because you can just implement it and it works most of the time. Uh, so you can read more on Raft at raftgithub.io. Uh, there are beautiful pictures and GIFs, and, and it's, it's a nice place to, to understand what, what this uh, protocol is about. Uh, and if we go into compare how Raft reacts on, on failures, because that's what we're looking for, uh, in our, in looking to to improve in our message replication and how um, Q mirroring reacts to failures, as you can see here, right, we still have all the needed uh, connections if one follower fails for Raft, but we lose uh, crucial connections if um, Q mirroring node fails. So in this case, um, Raft doesn't need to do anything uh, if something fails. Well, only if leader fails, it needs to re-elect a new leader, and then again, it can continue working. And uh, QMirroring needs to reform uh, a ring, and it needs to do something, which in the case when you have a lot of messages coming in, can be uh, not desirable behavior. Uh, so yeah, that's just some summary of rough either does nothing or re-elects a new leader and, and gets in a working state, while QMirroring needs to take action and coordinate and maybe synchronize some things. Uh, and we actually did that. So RabbitMQ actually created our own uh, Raft library, first of all, uh, because uh, existing Raft libraries in Erlang language are not, not perfect. They exist, but uh, they were not designed for RabbitMQ use case. Um, while this one is and is specific, uh, specifically designed for RabbitMQ, maybe it's not general purpose and, and not fit for some users of Raft. Uh, it's open source. It uh, has permissive license, and you can check it out on, on this um, GitHub uh, pro project. Um, there were certain challenges uh, we had to, to face when we were designing uh, Raft for RabbitMQ because we have many queues, and each queue uh, is a unit of uh, consensus, and meaning that uh, we need many Raft clusters, and so we need to save data to logs, to files, um, many times maybe on, on multiple concurrent processes. And we also need to keep uh, nodes aware of, of existence of leaders all the time, which is uh, in a system like RabbitMQ when you can have idle queues and you can have active queues. If all of them were just pinging each other, it wouldn't make sense. So we did some changes. So we have write ahead log where queues write they log their data. And then it gets redistributed to queue specific logs if it's needed or cleaned up if it's no longer relevant. Um, yeah, we have a pretty simple storage engine of there. And we have a per node heartbeat based on, I don't remember the, the name of the algorithm, but basically it, uh, it's a probability uh, failure detection rather than uh, timeout failure detection. So it tells you the probability on which this node may be down. And then based, I think we use something like 
95% and we say, okay, if it's 95% down, we just react and try to reestablish a new leader. And if a new leader can be reestablished, that's fine. No, it is not down and we continue working uh, just to reduce false positives. Uh, what else? The quorum queue. The quorum queue is a new type of the queue. It will be um, defined in the queue arguments, so you can declare a normal classic queue and or the quorum queue. Uh, it's designed not to lose messages if possible. So it will save data on disk on all the nodes. Uh, it's implemented as a raft state machine, obviously, and uh, it will be available uh, as long as you have a quorum. So if you lose two nodes out of three, there won't be, uh, it won't be available, it won't be able to process messages. But that's the safety concern because if you're able to downscale to one node, partition can basically render your system inconsistent. We don't want that. Uh, it's your business queue. So if you have an entity called the business queue in RabbitMQ, that's the queue you want to use. Um, probably it's anti-pattern, but still. Uh, there's certain trade-offs in that. So it trades uh, latency for throughput. As I said, it has to save data on disk on, on, on majority of the nodes. Uh, so it can go fast as the slower disk in the quorum. So disks are not as fast, milliseconds sometimes. Um, it might have high memory usage compared to classic queues. And of course, because it's a rough state machine, there's no definition of lazy state machines because all the state machines should apply all the operations on all the nodes. So when you switch to a follower, when leader changes, the follower node can continue doing the same thing as at leader did. Um, so it doesn't support many things which we do have in, in queues because we have so many things. It's just too much to implement in the, in the feature in a reasonable time. And yeah, it, it doesn't have a master, re, master rebalancing as we do have in queue mirroring because in Raft, uh, masters or leaders can switch transparently. Uh, and of course, as for um, consensus concern, it doesn't make much sense to have four nodes, for example, or two nodes, because two nodes is as reliable as one node, and four nodes is as reliable as three. So for resource, for resource conservation concerns, you probably want to use an odd number. Uh, so it's a bit of picture. I, I tried to somehow uh, represent how, how it works, so I'm going to just come and show. Um, this is, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I, I use different colors for different uh, workflows. So let's say we have a publish. And the, the channel, this is a channel uh, in RabbitMQ terms, it publishes a message and it goes to the raft log. And the raft log will replicate the message. Until it's replicated, it's this light blue color. It means that it may be lost. We don't guarantee that it's not lost. And as soon as it's replicated, we kind of guarantee that it's not lost because it's saved on, on the majority of nodes. So after this point, it can be applied to the state machine and it can be confirmed to the publisher. So as soon as it's confirmed to the publisher, you can be sure that the message is not lost at least if your entire cluster is not lost. It still could happen, but uh, probability is low. Um, after which, we can deliver the message to the consumer, and the consumer can acknowledge the message. Uh, when, when it acknowledges it, uh, acknowledge message also, also goes through the log, the same log as, as for publishers. Uh, and when it's applied, oh, cover with image, okay. When it's applied to the Q state machine, we can mark the publish uh, for this message as no longer relevant which means that log compaction can then remove it from the raft log. So this is an implementation thing, but this is how it works. This is how components uh, communicate. So what else? Oh, we have, um, this is something that we had to uh, a bit modify. We have to a bit modify how raft works for us because uh, we have, uh, certain requirements for 
Okay. We have certain requirements for Raft in RabbitMQ because we want to pump as many messages per second as we want, uh, as, as possible. We don't care that much about latency, but we care about throughput, and uh, it's a bit deviation of, of Raft. Uh, speaking of deviation, this is pretty much how we handle this problem. Uh, so if we have messages coming in at, at fast throughput, um, the Raft itself, it defines operations as synchronous, but they don't have to. They don't have to be synchronous. You don't have to wait for each operation to be applied on the log to actually get it confirmed. So what we do, we use a sliding window of commands on the publisher side, and we send them uh, in batches to uh, the Raft log, uh, and Raft log asynchronously will, well, the Raft as Q state machine, when it applies an operation, when it can, Raft log actually saves everything, gets the majority, gets the consensus, apply the operation, it can confirm um, the message to the publisher. Sometimes it can even confirm in batches. So like, I apply it and uh, publishes and, and the um, the publisher knows that, okay, I can, I can remove them from my local storage. And while they are not applied, it stays in the local storage, it, it can be even retried. So uh, publisher can retry sending them again until it actually gets, them, uh, gets the confirmation. Uh, and at the consumer side, this is actually a part of the protocol. We, we have the concept of um, prefetch count. Uh, which is basically give me please uh, n number of messages if you have. And then there can be acknowledgement, uh, acknowledge message from the consumers also in the protocol has a concept of acknowledgement range. So we just take the, the part of the protocol which we had for consumers and we apply that uh, slightly modified to the publishers and that's how we manage to send a lot of messages per second using Raft, but still keeping the consensus. A lot of technical details, sorry for that. Uh, as a bit of overview. As a bit of an overview on what challenges we we'll had, had to face when we were integrating the thing. As I already mentioned, the commands are asynchronous and we have to implement all this um, flow control thing inside. And flow control also have priorities, so you can't just um, spam your log, your, your queue, with publishers while consumers couldn't uh, consume. So uh, consumers have higher priorities and uh, if you start thousands of messages of inf ingress, you still can have thousands of messages of egress and they balance each other. Um, uh, the problem that we still have, actually, uh, if there is no quorum, and it's a conceptual uh, problem, you, you can't just solve it technically because it's, uh, it's how, how quorum works. If you start or stop a queue, or if you delete the queue or declare a queue, uh, you can't do that when you don't have a quorum of nodes available. So if you downscale to one node and the cluster is configured to be three nodes, you can't declare a quorum queue. But that's probably if your system is downscaled, if two or three servers failed, uh, we expect that the primary uh, objective will be to fix that and to declare queues later. Um, we haven't solved yet. Uh, we, we're going to do that. Uh, the problem that RabbitMQ clustering is separate from Raft clustering, so right now it's manual operation to change the clustering. Uh, as of in RabbitMQ, we had to track uh, queue states on each channel which uh, publishes the queues, which we didn't do before. So now, because Raft is like a, a concept across nodes, we couldn't just send a message to a process, because this process could be a follower, it can be even down. Right now, we send a message to a cluster, Raft cluster, as we call it, and uh, yeah, it will, it has a state and has all these slides in Windows, and it's a bit more uh, code and state that we manage right now. Uh, and consumers are also part of the state we'll have to manage in multiple places. 
So it's, uh, it, was, it was a bit involved. I think that's the biggest, um, one of the biggest code changes uh, was in channels and the code that manage all the clients for Raft system. But it works. And a bit of a reminder about where should you use message replication. And if we actually address uh, the use case with the quorum queues. So we wanted to have to, to, we wanted to tolerate arbitrary node values. As long as you have a quorum, you have all, all your messages on disk. This is check, right? We wanted to keep all messages, uh, not lose them. Uh, again, Raft is a TLA plus proven uh, protocol. So we expect if it's proven with formal methods, it's not losing messages. Um, and we want to keep message order and um, do not duplicate messages. And that's what uh, we are, um, implemented with, um, with a log. Because Raft has a log, you can't uh, break message ordering if, if they are all sequentially written in the log. Again, you shouldn't use uh, quorum queues in the scenarios mentioned above. You shouldn't use them for low latency setups if you not define low latency as hundreds of milliseconds. Uh, you shouldn't uh, use message aspiration. It's actually not supported in quorum queues. Uh, long queues is still an issue if you have resource constraints because the raft uh, has to keep messages both on disk in the log but also there is a state machine, which is a queue implementation, and it will keep messages in the memory. So we will we'll potentially use more memory. And if you use other resource constraints like CPU or disk or memory, you probably don't want to use extensive things like that. Um, of course, it depends on how you define constraints. And yes, this feature have been merged uh, to RabbitMQ Master branch uh, 29th of October this year. It's expected to ship in the next uh, minor version, 3.8. Uh, it's already available for testing. If you check up uh, bintray.com, yeah, that's where we distribute alpha builds. That's an alpha build. It's not a milestone or release candidate yet, uh, but you can download it. You can try it in the development environment, and you can try quorum queues and see how they work. Uh, send us all your bugs you found. Um, so it's an optional feature. It's not a default type of uh, distributed queue. Classic queues are still default, and they will be still uh, possible to do mirrored queues together with, with quorum queues. And they still like the, the option which, uh, well, we recommend to use by now. I mean. Uh, if, if they work, they work. Uh, if they don't work, you might take a look at the quorum keys. Uh, it's an experimental feature, as I mentioned. It's um, some monitoring, some uh, logging tools, some tooling around managing the Raft cluster, about uh, checking the health of, of the Raft cluster are not there yet, and we need, if you want to, to try this feature, we need your feedback on what do we need to monitor, what can break, what can, what can, what, which data do we need to collect from that. Um, and yeah, we have some um, limitations uh, on, on what you need to do manually uh, compared to mirrored queues as they work right now. But please try it out on your development environment, uh, at least, uh, and keep an eye on, on metrics you can collect and maybe uh, report if you find something. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, it's a bit of a comparison of uh, queue mirroring and the quorum queues uh, as it stands right now, and the, the actual problems that we solved. So we think that we solved uh, the problem with uh, message loss because uh, uh, queue mirroring could scale down to one node, which potential for, for message loss. Uh, we think that we improved the performance of replication because uh, mirrored queues were linear. If you add more nodes, you will just have more hops and it will wait longer. And Raft is parallel. Uh, we also think that we improved the failure detection because we don't have to rely on failure detection just to keep going. 
And yeah, we think this is a general improvement. And also because it uses Raft algorithm and not the homegrown uh, inspired by chain replication algorithm, we hope that will be easier to support it in future. But of course, it has some limitations. It has a limited set of, of features and policies are not supported in the current version. Uh, so things, all, all the beautiful things you can do with RabbitMQQs are not yet supported. Uh, so yeah, we had some problems and we solved them and it was hard. Um, implementing Raft as a library, Raft library, is not easy. It's not trivial at all. I mean, uh, Raft paper is um, oriented on implementers. It tells you which functions you should implement. But then when you have to actually implement it and make it efficient, there, there are a lot of, of problems to solve. Uh, I think mostly in efficiency uh, and, and the way that how can you achieve uh, certain uh, throughputs. And, yeah. uh, there is a build. Uh, we don't know yet what, what exactly do we need to monitor, but we go going to discover that. And yeah, distributed systems are still hard, even if they're proven, even if there is a paper and existing implementations still, still need something like a year to, to implement such, such things. Um, but what if, what if a raft was, was usable for something else? Right? It's a consensus protocol. It's general purpose consensus protocol. So maybe we can use it for something other than queues to solve some other RabbitMQ problems. Or maybe not problems, but uh, improve some other things. So what we were thinking about is um, improving leader election in some, in some components, like federation and shovel. When they work with the cluster, they need to decide on which cluster client should reside. Uh, delayed message exchange. Uh, currently, it works on, only for, for, for the local node, and we'd like to make it work with the clusters so we could have uh, cluster-wide delayed message exchanges. And um, we would like to separate message store from the queues. That's uh, one of the biggest things we, we work on right now. So we can have message storage separate from just position of this message in the queues. So we could save disk space, save memory, and just improve uh, performance. Uh, and um, the big pain of, of RabbitMQ, it's most of the time it doesn't fail, but when it fails, it's, it's unpleasant. Uh, it's partitioning. And partitioning relies on Nisha as an internal uh, data store for RabbitMQ. And as you can see in this beautiful <laughs> picture by Denise Yu, uh, it's a bit of a mess. Um, so quorum queues will not solve the partitioning problem in RabbitMQ because they address a different thing. And partitioning problem mostly arises from, from the use of Munizia clustering, which is not perfect and maybe not fit for certain uses of um, things like RabbitMQ. Uh, but we have a hope that using Raft and consensus protocols will let us do that. And that's why we have this experiment. Um, it's a way to replace Munizia commits with Raft commits, with Raft uh, consensus log. And we try that, and it works, works on my machine. Uh, I think it also works on Carl Nielsen's machine, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so it passes, it, it has a Jepson test, it passes a test which Mnesia doesn't pass. Uh, but of course, it's naive implementation, it's not fit for uh, any use yet because of uh, performance issues, but you can even take a look at it. Yep. It's, it's not, no promises here. It may never happen because of performance right now, something like up to 100 times slower than Nisha, probably not what you want. But there is a way to improve such things. Thank you. Okay, have we got any questions?
So you, you mentioned that it's not suitable for low latency uses, which makes perfect sense. What sort of latency can one expect? I mean, obviously it depends on the network setup, but supposing mm -hmm. you've got, you know, uh, well, what, what kind yeah. of what kind of setup can it support? Can it, it be globally yeah, yeah. replicated, or like, does it have to be local? And then what sort of what sort of latency can one expect, uh -huh. roughly speaking? So um, we tested that, I think, uh, as we develop on, on Mac OS machines, and it's just crap in terms of uh, FCNKIN. Uh, we also had run tests on uh, the cloud Linux machines, and we also run tests on the, what was that? Uh, there was some new Intel provided um, disk, like super fast. Uh, and we were not, at trying to improve latency. So it's not latency optimized. But what we got from, um, from what, what we, we implemented oh, could be something like um, milliseconds for a um, single command to be applied on the cluster. So if you, if you apply, uh, if you have, sh well, fast network, of course, uh, if you apply, it can be several milliseconds. Uh, to uh, confirm this message on, on, on all nodes. Uh, and if you go to faster disk, the faster it goes. It can, it can get to sub milliseconds, uh, but you need some, some ridiculously fast disks. And we have not uh, addressed uh, the latency. We tried to address throughput and try to reach as, as high throughput as we could, rather than trying to address latency. We actually recommend to use prefetch counts of thousands rather than hundreds even. And uh, also uh, there, there are some, some uh, big, slight big windows of, of, wi of, of messages which are being accumulated and sent in batches. So we're trying to send as many messages in one batch as possible, which makes it uh, a bit slow in terms of latency. Uh, 